Oh, I had the crow on. The stick type model is a classic design going back nearly half a century. Now Hangar 9 has an all wood, ready to fly electric version with a 60 inch wingspan. It comes out of the box with everything you need except receiver and battery. Model is tightly covered in Ultra Coat. With all the servos already installed. All linkages have sturdy ball link clevises. I was curious about how the wing servos were mounted and was happy to see well glued and beefy wood servo mounts. Servos are digital and metal geared. Fuselage is also nicely finished with cooling air exit holes. ESC uses an IC5 connector and tail servos are also digital metal geared, though curiously the servo arm screws are not installed. Motor is a 523 kV 50 size class and is pretty beefy looking. I also noted a little bit of right thrust offset built into the firewall. Underneath the battery compartment is the 60 amp Avian Smart Speed Controller. I really like that the metal landing gear is pre-assembled with even the wheel pans attached. Wheels appear to be mostly solid rubber. Manual is a typical Hangar 9 fare with clear black and white pictures and setup details. So the first thing is to install the tail servo arm screws. Then we move on to the rudder. The manual says to slide the collar down, but it wouldn't go past the bend. But with a little force, it wasn't an issue and everything slid into place quite nicely. The horizontal tail then slides into place and is affixed with locking nuts. Landing gear is next using three screws. Then pop on the tail ball links. A whole bundle of servo extensions and wire harnesses are zip tied in the fuselage. An impressive amount of these servo harnesses are included in the kit. Receiver I'll be using is a Spectrum 8 channel AR8020 telemetry. Wing halves are designed to be split apart for transportation. Excuse me while I label these connectors. Now to set up the wing configuration in the radio. In this case, separate channels for all the servos. Okay, checking the controls, I noted one aileron servo was not quite centered. This required repositioning the servo arm. Which did the trick quite nicely. Slap on a 13 inch prop. And rather pointy spinner. My friends, we have a plane. I did notice the wheel pant screws were a little loose. Decals are peel and stick and let you customize the flare. I'll mainly be using the 6S 5000 mAh smart packs, which provide additional telemetry data. Battery hatch is secured with a knurled knob. Okay, so I have finished putting together the Ultra Stick and I thought I'd take a few moments out to talk about how I set it up because things are a little different than what you would normally think for a plane like this. Uh, so there's a reason why I used a, an eight channel receiver for something that's normally five channels. In fact, I use seven out of the eight channels on this thing because uh, it has been tweaked. According to the instructions, I actually gave some uh, ideas on how to set up some interesting mixing. So I thought I'd just give a real quick rundown of what I did. Now, first, first thing, of course, is we have flaps. You know, we have, I have set two settings of flaps. Now, normally I like to put a delay in the flaps, but I didn't this time because I, for a particular reason. And so, and we've got a little bit of down trim with the elevator, I don't know if you can see that, with the flaps. Now, another thing is, of course, we have the normal ailerons. I've got them set up for high and low rates. But now I can also mix with a switch in flaps with the ailerons. So for, for extra roll authority, 
we can have either flaps mixed in or not. So I thought that's pretty neat. But wait, there's more. So I've also mixed in the flaps with another switch. I can have flaps mixed in with the elevator. So with up elevator, I got a little bit of down flaps. With down elevator, I got a little bit of up flaps, so reflex, you can just call it. And now uh, this is <laughs> something control line guys have done a long time ago. They're like, ah, that's old news. But uh, this will be interesting in an RC plane. I don't think I've ever flown a plane with has uh, flaps mixed with the elevator like that. That's pretty neat. So up elevator, down flaps. This really should tighten the loops on it. I don't have a whole lot of throw. I may um, increase the mix, uh, double check the manual, we'll see what they say. But at least that's a start. That should be pretty interesting. And then one final mix I have is I'll flip a switch here. And now I have Crow. So for some air brake action here, I can plop the flaps down and raise reflex the ailerons up on both sides. And this is a, what we call crow, it's a very draggy configuration. So I should be able to, to dive uh, without gaining a, lot, a whole lot of airspeed or any airspeed, hopefully we'll see how it flies. And I still have aileron authority and I have two settings of crow in case things get really wild. So this should be really interesting as well because I don't think I've ever programmed a plane with crow. So uh, the, the biggest thing is I have to remember what all these switches do. I literally have three different switches to do all this stuff. There's probably a more efficient way of doing this, but I'm happy that I'm, I was able to program this at all. It probably took me longer to do all this programming than to actually assemble the plane. The plane actually gets assembled very, very quickly. But programming it was a little more in depth <laughs> and I'm just happy I was able to do it. Uh, so this is very much for advanced uh, features and advanced flyers. But if I disable everything, it should fly just like a normal sport plane. So let's go take this thing out and give it a try. All right, it's flying time. Well, once I plug in the battery, that is. All right, we've got the Hangar 9 Ultra Stick. Let's take her for a test shot here. Let me uh, taxi out here. Make sure I got, uh, remember how all the controls work. We've got Rallerons. And we've got the super ailerons, and we've got the flap evaders. <laughs> I guess that's what you call it. <laughs> and let's see, crow, yes, crow. All right, so if I reset everything else, then I've got normal flaps. All right. Come on. Ooh, that feels the power. All right, let's go. Whoops. She's up, into the sun. <laughs> All right, so I got everything on low rates and she's doing really good. It's, on low rate, this plane is really mild. Come around about half throttle, not even half throttle. Looks like I got a little bit of up trim here. There we go. She's up and flying really nice, really smooth. We'll do a show pass here. Right, so, felt pretty powerful. Let's point the nose up. And really good power. Ah, I thought it'd peter out, but it's still going. And it's still going, slow down, but it's up. And controls are still responsive. And roll it down. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to add some throws, go up a little bit on both the elevator and aileron. Oh, yeah. Rolls definitely faster. I don't think I rolled it on slow. Here's low rate roll. That's full. All right. Now here's full high rate ailerons. That's nice. Not frighteningly so. Let's try the elevator. Oh, yeah, elevator's a bit more sensitive. High rate elevator. Whoa. <laughs> Enough to kind of snap it out of it. <laughs> we'll go back to mid rate. <laughs> so you certainly can get a little overboard with the elevator, but. 
<laughs> really good inverted. Just a little bit of down. Reasonably quick. Let's try the flaps a little bit. I didn't use them on takeoff. One notch of flaps, see what it does. Nothing drastic. Two notch. But ask you to program a little bit of down trim with flaps and it looks like they're spot on. Raise the flaps, I'm gonna go around and really see. The wind is picked up, so I'm gonna come around and hit the flaps and see how she does at really slow speed. Throttle cut. I'm gonna clean some up elevator. More up, there's full up. Left wing dropped a bit. I can do a low speed run with the throttle. I mean, yeah, I mean, it still fly really slow. Look at that. Let's see if I remember all my combinations here. But now I'm going to go low rate aileron, and I'm going to do the full flapperons. There we go. See how that works. All right, that's low, there's mid, and there's high. Ah, <laughs> pretty sprightly and high. Oh, definitely a little touchier. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. All right, let's go back normal. <laughs> so we're back on normal aileron, starts to snap. <laughs> nice. Let's do it outside. Push over. All right, so we've got, let's see, flap elevators. I think that's this switch. So now we've got flaps and elevator mixed. Not bad, it's stable. <laughs> oh, we can't get too aggressive. It'll snap out a little bit. Maybe it works better at low speeds. I've never had flap evaders. I don't even know that's what it's called. <laughs> There's a low speed one. That's pretty neat. The next thing I tried was the crow feature, which was pretty uneventful, but it did allow some really steep approaches. Control was real good all the way to touchdown. This feature should be really handy at tight flying fields. With the mixing test done, I decided to experiment with throwing an ultra stick around. Snap. <laughs> with some snaps, Come on, baby. Here spins we go. to the left, right, right. spins to the right, there we go. and even this something. Even a mild blender. <laughs> She'll do a decent knife edge with even some reserve on the rudder, but I did need a touch of elevator to keep her straight. It handled so nice that I accidentally landed with Crow enabled. <laughs> oh, I had the Crow on. I thought the elevators were popped up. Whoops, let me try that again without the Crow. <laughs> I'm surprised how those islands with the crow eyes. Take off here with partial flaps. We get some quick with some flaps. But in a proper flap configuration, the ultra stick almost didn't want to land. We're just floaty. <laughs> Alright folks, hang on ultra stick, electric, 6S power. Nice easy flying plane. Well, that's the Hangar 9 Ultra Stick. Uh, now, I must say I had a great time experimenting with this flight envelope and just, you know, kind of flying around in general. But when you really crank up the throws and throw the sticks in the corners, you really have a snappy plane. Now, I should note that while most of my flying was on uh, this 6S 5000 pack, I did try a 6S 3200, which flew just fine and even had a little better vertical performance. 
Now, I even tried some hover batics with it, but I'm terrible at it, so don't judge me. Now, that said, the model is a joy to fly in any attitude, and I think it would make a great second or even third model for new pilots or just a great stress reliever for the us experienced pilots. Now, while all the fancy missing is not needed for most flyers, it is great to have the option to uh, spice things up a little bit. And now I have Crow.